So, um, hello everyone, um, sorry about the light, um, I don't actually have a proper light at the moment, this is literally just a desk lamp, but it looks terrible like that, so let's put it like that. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be sending out a Mantis Care video, but not for any type of Mantis, because I have actually seen a lot of care videos out there that um, are just too general, and there have been other YouTubers that have been complaining about this and doing the same video that I'm doing, not to say that I'm the star of this. But I'm going to be creating a video, a care video, specifically on orchid mantises. I will not be um, doing it for any other species. It can be pretty much for any type of species in the orchid mantis family. Like the yellow orchid mantis and stuff like that. Um, but it, nothing else really. Because orchid mantises do have some unique care points. Unique care points. Some unique care needs. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to get on with the video. So first of all, I just want to clarify something that actually not a lot of people do clarify in their care videos. Um, praying mantises cannot be housed together. I'm just going to say that at the start of the video. They cannot be housed together. These are cannibals and they will eat each other. You may get away with it if they haven't had their first molt yet, if they're still nymphs. But pretty much their whole life, um, they probably will eat each other um species like violin mantises sometimes can get away with it um even until adulthood but it's not something that is smart to do you will most likely lose one um so that is just a disclaimer at the start of the video that they cannot live together um and the next thing that i'm going to tell you is the difference between males and females males are significantly smaller than the females females can actually get to around three to four inches males tops two and a half three inches it doesn't sound too much smaller but when you look at them compared to the skinniness and the females how more bulky the female is and how much longer the female is it is so much different and it's easy to tell um but that is the difference between um the two of them next i'm just going to give out the heating and humidity needs um so, orchid mantises are a relatively high humidity needing animal, um, invertebrate should I say. Um, so, they will need a environment, a cage, enclosure, varying whatever you're putting it in. It will need to hold its moisture very well. If you're putting it in a net cage, a mesh cage, anything like that, it's not going to hold moisture. I would definitely not recommend it. I will just go and show you my orchid mantis cage. So this actually was my, um, this is my orchid mantis cage, um, surprisingly, this is a, is something that I actually got from Ikea, I got lucky with this, it had this man thingy in it, but it obviously it was like that, um, but that is what this was, so don't go and look for something like this, you probably will find something like this. But just saying, this was packaging from Ikea. There's nothing in here at the moment because I did have an orchid mantis, but it was an adult and it passed away due to old age. Um, another one will be on its way soon um, to go in here. So they love tall spaces. Um, praying mantises, the average that you should be getting is around two times their length wide and around three times their length height but obviously this is much more than three times their length height because mantises obviously are arboreal but they do need space to shed so especially in places like this this is the place that a praying mantis is most likely going to shed it could shed on this stick but it's most likely going to shed this side so this is definitely three times the length and two times wide yes so i think i went on with how i'll probably go on to a part two um, I'll put this as part one, but just don't be expecting a part two, but it's probably going to come because there's a lot of care for these guys. Um, humidity, like I say, um, I spray this six to ten sprays every time. I spray it around every day, once a day, to every once every two days. Um, normally, you're not supposed to have the condensation on your cage um eight to ten hours after you sprayed it because otherwise that is saying that you've put too much in if it does have condensation on the side like it does now i only sprayed this about 30 minutes ago um 
do not spray it again because I, you do not want to put too much water in there that your mantis will drown, which is possible. Because um, these guys are a relatively hard species to keep, like I said, they're not a good beginner species, just to put that out there. Um, let's I'm going to go into heating. These guys, they don't definite, they don't need heating, but they do prefer it. If you just put a small heat mat underneath, um, maybe be careful with something like this, um, maybe put something underneath this that will not burn, um, and definitely a thermostat because this could melt and this will get too hot, which um, can also kill your mantis. These are more prone to dying because obviously they need more needs. Um, so yeah, like I said about the humidity, a little bit higher than most mantises. Most mantises need it around 70%. These guys around 80%, um, not 90. 90, they can live with it, but it's not something that they like 100%. It's just, that's the point where they will drown. Um, so, I definitely keep it to 80 to 85% is um, my recommended. So, yeah, I'm actually going to move on to feeding next. So, feeding throughout their life, these guys will be eating mostly fruit flies because they're not a big species like my Asian mantises and my shield mantises. These guys are tiny compared to those. They can get nearly six inches, the shield mantises can. Um, so this um, can is definitely a good um, place for fruit flies, small locusts, definitely, because they can climb and a mantis will climb as well. Crickets will just stay at the bottom and that's absolutely useless. Um, if you do have a tub that you can put your mantis in for feeding separate, I definitely wouldn't recommend that, but if your mantis is struggling to eat inside its enclosure, I feed, I do feed them in smaller enclosures. This has different stuff in it, um, otherwise reptile stuff, it just has my headphones in it. Um, but if you put it in something like this and you just put some fabric on top or some sort of material so it can climb, and obviously the lid, let's be common sense, um, let's be common sense, never mind. <laughs> Um, put it in something like that. If it that if that doesn't work, if it's big enough, put it in a wax worm tub. Um, they do not need too much space to move around, but obviously they can't live in there. But I'd still put it in there, um, because they don't move a whole lot at times. I do have a peacock mantis that does struggle to eat, but after a while, maybe if I leave it in there for um eighteen to twenty four hours, um, it will actually eat in there. So, um, it's definitely worth doing that. Um, but not just for the sake of it. I'd definitely just put them in something like this. Um, another trip for feeding is, especially if it's on the lid, I wouldn't really mess around with it if it's down here somewhere. But, if it's on the lid, um, you can just put the prey mantis on the lid, or keep it on the lid if it's still there, and just put its food on there. Um, normally stuff like mealworms work for that, waxworms, um... Not the best for feeding because they're very fatty. Um, stuff like mealworms do work. So, yeah. Um, crickets will just jump off or run off. Um, locusts are more of the jumpy ones. Um, but, yes, they can. As they get older, as they get to like maybe sub-adult to adult, females are more, more likely to get to this stage of eating. You can feed them very small locusts. Um, males can eat small crickets otherwise, but obviously, if you have it in a cage as tall as this, um, you, they're probably not going to get it unless they're down here somewhere. Um, so, yeah, I definitely recommend to fight fruit flies. You can get slightly larger fruit flies than the average that they sell, um, or very small locusts. Um, so, yeah, that is good for that tank. Um, so, yeah, now um, I'm just going to quickly hop onto the breeding part um breeding is pretty much the same as all mantises but these guys i found out when i've bred them in the past that they are a little bit harder because um the females um, um i think over my experience i may not be right overall but in my experience females are better at eating than the males um the females sometimes will eat the male even before the um, mating. Sometimes a female will just eat the head off and the, the male can still mate. 
but normally the female if normally if the female does eat the male just eat the whole thing um yeah they can breed you can breed these guys obviously because otherwise they wouldn't be a species anymore but they are a little bit harder than other species i've bred about five species of bread asians shields malaysian flowers ghost mantises and giant africans i think um i've that would be six then because i have bred the orchids once um yeah the orchids have been the hardest out of all of them for me now the size of these guys like i said earlier the males are significantly smaller than the females i'm just going to quickly hop over this because earlier i just said it a little bit um the males are significantly smaller than the females the females are so much bigger um and the females can get around four inches probably tops males two and a half to three inches tops so yeah that's just the size right so i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please like subscribe turn on the notification bell then you can get every single video upload and you can get more information about reptiles i will be doing specific care videos for reptiles because a lot of them are just in general and they do not apply to others um i will be doing egg care for maclays and Indians and pink wing stick insects, um, and I might be doing them for some Gaia stick insects, some Gaia stick insects. Um, so yeah, that'll be coming in the future. If you want to do see stuff like that, obviously stay tuned. But if you don't want to see stuff like that, you can comment down below, and then I can take all your comments into um, account, and I can um, make videos out of that. I'll most likely make videos out of that because I don't get hundreds of comments. So do text down below and text, do comment down below and the, the chances are that will be turned into a video. So if you want to see that, comment down below and I'll give you all the information because I'll probably know because I've kept a lot of reptiles in my time. Um, so I'll see you soon. Bye.